Hello again. For today's lesson, we're going to talk about series and parallel circuits. For series circuits, This is how the circuit look like. We can see the components, these three components, they are connected end to end. And so that it produces a single path. While for the parallel circuit, the circuit should look something like this. The same three components, they are no longer end-to-end. -end. Instead, they are connected side by side. For series, the potential difference is shared. Whereas the current is the same. Now, if you remember, the definition for potential difference, it states that it's the work done to move a unit charge from a point to the other. So, when there's a point A here and point B here, we assume the power supply here provides a 6 volt. Therefore, it creates a 6 volt of potential difference across the A and B point. And therefore, each component, they share the 6 volt provided by the power supply. So, each, car, each component, I assume they have the same resistance they will receive the equal amount of 2 volt by each component. And therefore, the current for the whole circuit is the same. Now, we move to the parallel. The current in parallel circuit is shared. Whereas, the potential difference is the same. Same thing, we provide a 6 volt power supply here. And then I label this as A, B, C, D, E, and lastly, F. So, when the 6 volt power supply are provided in this circuit, the potential difference between A and B, C and D, and also E and F, they have the same potential difference of 6 volt, 6 volt, 6 volt. And this has the same resistance. Therefore, we said that the potential difference across each component are the same. And so, the current from this will be equally shared to this 2 and I3. And it comes back again as I. Before this, we have learned that when you measure the current, 
you use an apparatus that call emitter. And for emitter, we measure it the, car the current of the circuit. That's why it should be connected in series. Whereas for parallel circuit, when we measure the potential difference, we use the voltmeter and so if we measure a potential difference across one component, the voltmeter should be connected in parallel so that the potential difference across point A and point B can be measured. Next, we will move on to the effective resistance.